Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Massimiliano Giacometti. I'm here today as a staff member of the Open Hardware Group. And co-host, of virtual co-host, actually, of this presentation is Dallin Westergreen from uh, Intel Corporation. And the topic of this talk is about Intel Pathfinder for RISC V and its integration with the Open, uh, open Hardware Core 5 CVA6 CPU. So let's get started. You will hear at the beginning, well, those of you who were here uh, this morning uh, listening to Rick's presentation will hear now uh, basically a repetition of the same concept. Well, it's good to repeat, and it's something new for those who didn't attend the, the talk before. So what is Open Hardware? It is a non-for-profit organization. Uh, it is based in Canada and also in Europe. And um, uh, it's... Um, the idea of the, uh, of the organization is to develop high-quality IPs. Uh, the development is done by its uh, academic and its uh, corporate members and partners. And uh, all the development which, has, which is done uh, under the Open Hardware Group is released open source for, for the community. We have almost 100 uh, members and partners in the organization. Here you see the list of the industrial members. There are well, quite a lot of big names like Alibaba, Imagination, Silicon Labs, NXP. Um, we also have a number of academic members. And here is a snapshot of the uh, partners for our ecosystem. So you can see that all the big names basically of the semiconductor industry uh, are part of the uh, part of the community. Uh, AMD, Xilinx is there, AWS, uh, Intel, Synopsys, Cadence and Siemens are all working with us. As I mentioned, what we do is um, offer, maintain, verify, um, populate high-quality uh, CPUs, op release them open source. We also um, want to uh, foster the adoption of the open source tools and methodologies and IPs uh, in the industry. And um, we want to help uh, Understand, uh, help people and companies understand the values of open source, uh, open source hardware. And we want to encourage our members to collaborate in the development of this product, and we offer a platform uh, for them to carry on the project of their interest. So as I said, uh, um, okay, no, first. Uh, this picture gives an overview of the, um, uh, of the roadmap uh, which we have in terms of uh, IP cores. So we have eight, nine um, CPUs in our portfolio. We have embedded CPUs and we have application level CPUs. So we start from the CV32 E20, which is a very small core, two stage core. We have bigger CPUs, uh, which are the E4 family. Um, the first one of the, our CPUs which uh, reached maturity is the CV32 E4TP. Um, and uh, earlier this year has been announced that um, the, well, exactly this CPU will be taped out. Uh, tape out is, uh, is foreseen for the uh, beginning of next year. Um, this product will be then be integrated in the Core 5 MCU, uh, which we will receive the well, first half of next year. And it is ab available for, for everyone, who, uh, everyone who is interested in, uh, in experimenting with our IPs for purchase on GroupGet. So if you're interested, you can go on the website of the Open Hardware Group, openhardwaregroup.org. Uh, follow the links, and then you will be redirected to the group get page where you can uh, reserve your uh, your development kit. Um, there are three, four CPUs which span off from this um, uh, first um, CV32 E4 TP. So there are um, uh, there are CPUs which uh, integrate extensions like uh, things and uh, the CA proof 
uh, these are proof of concept. Then there are other, uh, the V2 version, uh, it is integrating a uh, new feature uh, and FPU verification. We have a CPU for security um, applications and we have a CPU which integrates uh, the extension interface. I will talk about this uh, a little later in my talk. The last two, or better three, uh, cores, which are part of the Core 5 family, are the CV32E5, which is an application level CPU um, which is uh, tailored for FPGA implementation. And the last two are part of the CVA6 family. So there is the CV64A6 uh, and the CV32A6, which are our flagship cores, uh, um, Linux capable uh, with uh, memory management unit caching. And um, um, yeah, they are uh, targeting for the high high end applications. So in the title of the presentation, I mentioned Intel Pathfinder for RISC V. And at this point, I will let my co-host talk. So it's time for his video. Thank you, Max. Uh, my name is Dallin Westergreen, and I'm here representing the Intel Pathfinder for RISC V team. Um, we're going to talk about Intel Pathfinder for RISC V. Firstly, what is Intel Pathfinder for RISC V? Intel Pathfinder for RISC V uh, comprises of a collection of open source and third party tools uh, with the intent of easing the exploration of RISC V based designs. We partnered with a number of commercial and open source RISC V vendors um, and software providers to, to uh, enable a, a slew of RISC V uh, based proce processors in Intel Pathfinder for RISC V. Uh, we have a, a large number of uh, vendors supporting us during our initial launch, uh, one of which is Open Hardware Group and uh, you know, their CVA6 and other uh, cores. Uh, but we've got support from Andes and uh, uh, a number of other IP vendors, uh, both for RISC-V based cores, you know, surrounding IP and for uh, software. For Intel Pathfinder for RISC-V, we've developed an Eclipse-based IDE and provided GNU and LLVM toolchains. Support for bare metal, FreeRTOS, Zephyr, and Yocto Linux based software development. We're featuring IP from both commercial and open source vendors for RISC V cores, accelerators, and other ancillary IP. And for all of these implementations, we're targeting FPGA platforms, simulators, and for larger designs, we even support uh, remote access to large emulation platforms. Intel Pathfinder for RISC V. Uh, comes in two editions, the starter edition and the professional edition. The starter edition is targeted towards uh, universities and students. It's focused mainly on smaller open source based implementations and targets a small FPGA platform, um, uh, the uh, Terrasic developer kit for Intel Pathfinder for RISC-V. Uh, the starter edition supports the, the currently supports the uh, Rocket Core and the Neo RV Core for uh, Yocto Linux, Zephyr, and FreeRTOS software development. For the professional edition, uh, we've added support for uh, Imperis uh, simulation environments, uh, for uh, SQL compilers, and for uh, a number of uh, RISC V based uh, commercial uh, and open source uh, RISC V cores. For the professional edition, we target a larger FPGA board, the Stratix 10GX PCIe development kit as well as a large Siemens uh, Pro FPGA emulation environment. Here we just have some uh, pictures of the uh, different development kits that we're targeting. Uh, the top one is the uh, Siemens Veloci Pro FPGA kit. It consists of one or more Stratix 10M based FPGAs, which are 10 million LE uh, devices. Um, these enable, uh, this enables us to do full chip emulation for large RISC-V based cores. Um, the middle board is really targeted towards, as I mentioned before, the professional edition and larger uh, RISC-V based implementations. And then the last board is a smaller FPGA kit uh, targeting small RISC-V based cores. Um, and again, tar targeting mainly uh, student type engagement. What we've done in the FPGA designs is provided a consistent set of peripherals around the RISC-V based cores. Uh, these include DDR, PCIe, Ethernet, you know, GPIO, UARTs, um, and uh, a number of example projects. For these cores, where possible, we've enabled the virtual JTAG to eliminate the need for uh, external debug hardware for the RISC-V processor cores. 
As I mentioned before, Intel Pathfinder for RISC V is an Eclipse-based development environment. Uh, we've added a number of features around uh, FPGA support. Uh, the tool installs the Cordis programmer uh, along with it to allow for FPGA configuration and use of the virtual JTAG infrastructure. Um, we support uh, bare metal, Linux tool chains, LLVM, FreeRTOS, Yocto, Zephyr, um, and then a debugging on both emulators and FPGA platforms. We now have a short demo on, uh, on, on the tool, so we can bring it up and uh, walk through uh, the tool. Um, so I'm just launching it from the command line. <clears throat> um, as you can see, this is just an Eclipse-based uh, IDE. Uh, I mentioned that before. Uh, what we're going to be doing for this demo is creating a, uh, a small Hello World project for the Open Hardware Core 5 MCU. Uh, we're going to program our FPGA board, which in this case is a Stratix 10GX PCIe development kit. <clears throat> and then we're going to use virtual JTAG uh, to download and debug the core on the FPGA platform. Um, so the first steps we're going to do is to create a new project. So we're going to go new C project. Uh, Intel Pathfinder for RISC-V ships with a number of example designs, um, one of which is a, a small Hello World application specifically targeting the Core 5 MCU. So we're going to select that, uh, give the project a name. So we'll just call it Open Hardware uh, MCU, <clears throat> and then click Finish. So it'll now create a new project in the, uh, in the, in the Eclipse project window. Um, once that's done, we can just right click or if you want to look at the code, see it's just a small hello world type code, just doing some loops and some counting, uh, nothing uh, astronomical. Um, we're just going to build this code now. Uh, we'll click uh, build project. Yeah. Um, the next step for us to do is to uh, program the FPGA. So we're going to open up the FPGA programming window. We'll select the core that we're targeting. Uh, again, the uh, Open Hardware Core 5 MCU. I'm going to select the custom FPGA image just for this case. Uh, just have a newer version of the Im image uh, available to me. Oh, and I, I neglected to turn on the board, so the JTAG cable isn't there. So uh, you'll hear a bit of a noise in the background. I'm just powering up the FPGA kit. I hope that's not too noisy. Uh, but we're opening up the FPGA programming window again, selecting the Core 5 MCU. Uh, choosing a custom FPGA image. And you can see now that the FPGA programming cable is now selected. So we can hit finish and the FPGA will program. This will just take a few seconds. And there we go. You can see the FPGA has been fully configured. The next step is to uh, create a new debug configuration. Uh, we can debug it. As you can see, we can actually target emulators um, or hardware, but we're going to go do a, a, a new uh, debug configuration. <clears throat> you know, right click here, create a new configuration. Uh, we'll go to the debugger, select uh, the, the Open Hardware Core 5 MCU, <clears throat> and apply. Go to the startup. We just want to make sure it loads and set the, uh, the breakpoint properly. Uh, this part over here should be in the default configuration, and we're updating that. And for this case, we're just going to use a, a custom OpenRCD configuration file, just because it's a new image and it hasn't been fully integrated yet. Once that's all done, we can just hit debug. It will uh, launch the OpenRCD configuration, uh, download the application to the board, and here we can see us switching to the debug perspective. As you can see, we've launched the uh, the debug session. We're now connected to the Open Hardware MCU, and we have our application uh, stopped at the uh, entry to our main uh, function. At this point in time, we can step through the code. We can you know inspect any registers in here. We can look at the disassembly. We can do whatever we expect to see in uh, a, a normal debug session. I'm going to disconnect from the uh, the board now and then power it down so we just don't have this uh, loud noise in the background. There we go. That's much better. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation on Intel Pathfinder for RISC-V, and I hope you enjoyed our demo. If you have any further questions, please go to pathfinder.intel.com. And thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Max. 
All right. So let's continue talking about what what is open order to do with the with the Intel Pathfinder for Risk Five. So as you heard. There is a number of cores, um, open hardware uh, core five CPUs, which are already integrated in the in the tool. And what I would like to do now is to talk a bit more about one of these cores, um, the CVA6 family of cores. So these are six stage in order single issue CPUs. And they came in. Uh, uh, they are highly configurable. Uh, at first, you can select whether it is a 64 or a 32-bit uh, core. And uh, as I mentioned, a bit number, a large number of configuration are are possible. I will talk uh, in the next slide about this. Um, there are two main uh, CPUs. So the CV uh, CV64 E60 which uh, was originally known as the Ariane core, which is the, the core which has been developed by ETH Zurich and then donated to the open hardware group. And now we're uh, further improving uh, this, um, uh, this design. The second, a uh, newer one, is um, the CV32E60. It is, it is a smaller version. And um, um, among the parameters we can, which can be tweaked, uh, it can be... Uh, uh, it can be configured so that it is uh, very small without MMU, without caches, without a floating point unit. So you have the same architecture, but in a much more compact version. What else it is possible? How else it is possible to modify this um, this IP? So as mentioned, the number of bits is configurable. The type of cache is configurable, so it is possible to select a write back cache or a write through cache or no cache. If, uh, if the design requires it. Um, it is possible to select which type of floating point unit um, to, to integrate in the system. So uh, double, uh, double precision, single precision, or no floating point at all. Um, the MMU is also a parameter which can be changed. So no MMU or CV, uh, SV32 or SV39 uh, um, protocol. The number of PMP registers, these are the registers which um, uh, implement memory protection mechanism, um, are, are configurable. Um, there is possibility to have support for hypervisor extension. And finally, it is possible to have um, the extension interface integrated in the core. What the uh, extension interface does, so that the code name is CVXEF, is basically it gives the possibility to attach coprocessors to uh, to this core, and um, the the interface has been specified by the, the Open Hardware Group, and um, as everything which which we do, uh, it is available op as open standard, so everybody is uh, has the possibility to to develop uh, accelerator or coprocessors which are compatible with our uh, with our IPs. Uh, what can you do with uh, with this? So basically you can have a coprocessor which implements one of the official extensions of the RISC-V ISA. So for example, bit manipulation or vector extension. But it is also possible to implement your own extensions like uh, you have an idea for, I don't know, digital signal processing accelerator, you can wrap it uh, in, a, in a module which, uh, which is able to talk this, uh, uh, this standard, and you can plug it in, uh, in this uh, CPU. Um, so it is a powerful way to, to extend the functionality of the core without having the need to verify the core every time you add a new feature to the system. And it is also very convenient because it allows you to, to share coprocessor among the different uh, CPUs. For example, if you develop something for, uh, for the CVA6, you can reuse it also on a smaller CPU if there is, if there is the need. In terms of software support, um, CVA6 uh, has already been tested to work with OpenSPI and U-Boot as firmware and bootloader. It supports uh, um, well fairly popular open source uh, like Linux, Yocto, uh, or FreeRTOS. 
Uh, it is, of course, compatible with the standard RISC-V toolchain. So you have the RISC-V GCC, GDB, OpenOCD, which basically work out of the box. And we, are also, we also have an Eclipse-based IDE, where you can, uh, you can program your system, debug, um, and have the, the usual um, Eclipse IDE look and feel. In terms of target platforms, the, um, the idea is to have the CVA6 as Im implemented on an ASIC, but for prototyping and evaluation and emulation reason, uh, it is also possible to, uh, to use it on any kind of FPGA. It is uh, technology agnost agnostic, so as you've seen through uh, Intel Pathfinder for RISC-V, it is possible to run it on a Stratix 10 board. And uh, in the repository, uh, you also have the files to generate the bitstream for a number of Xilinx-based um, uh, FPGA boards. Other useful information, uh, most important probably, is regarding the verification, uh, verification environment. So as all the CPUs which are offered by the Open Hardware Group, um, we are using the Core 5 Verif uh, as environment to test, uh, to test this, uh, this core. So you get the test plan, you get the uh, test benches, you get uh, an instruction set simulator, um, which you can reuse to verify on your own this core. Uh, we have a mechanism for continuous integration so that every time there is a, um, um, a change in the design, uh, all the tests are, are started and it is possible to, um, to verify whether there is an error in the, in the modification of the design before it is committed to the, to the, main, branch, uh, to the main branch of the, of the project. Um, we are using a number of test suits like uh, RISC-V compliance tests, RISC-V tests, uh, RISC-V DV, which is um, uh, an instruction generator, random instruction generator, uh, originally designed by Google, and we also have custom tests to verify um, to verify all corner cases in the design. The license uh, is a solder pad license. It is an uh, open source, permissive, and friendly for commercial use, which is important for all the members of the of the organization. And yeah, contributors are basically uh, from the industry, from the uh, members of the uh, coming from the academia, and also from um, individual contributors. Here, I leave a couple of interesting links. So, regarding the um, the repository for the core repository for the SDK, a repository for the um, uh, verification uh, environment. And this is all for this presentation, unless you have some questions. Yep. Uh, microphone, please. Uh, in which hardware description language uh, do you write the cores? All the cores are written in System Verilog. Okay. And do you also provide some kind of hooks? So if you extend it with instructions that you generate like steps for the compiler? For the compilers, I don't think we have any hook, but for the uh, uh, for the instruction, you've seen that there is this um, uh, CVX interface, so you can plug your accelerator to the core and uh, and execute your your custom instructions. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll just add a, a uh, another detail to the to the answer to that question on the software side in the ecosystem in the open hardware ecosystem. Uh, probably our largest task group is a software task group. And there's GCC, LLVM, compiler work, IDE work, uh, uh, OS porting work, and so on. And with the way that we've defined a common interface with the Core 5 extension interface on the hardware side, it gives a repeatable interface on the software side to add your custom instructions. Um, and you'll have plenty of collaborators if you want to go and 
hang out with those guys because there's a we support a number of custom extensions that were uh, contributed as part of the work from ETH Zurich uh, under a program called Pulp, uh, the Pulp platform. So there's uh, custom hardware loops and different instructions, SIMD instructions that are that were part of that research work that are have been pushed through to top of tree for GCC uh, and are recognized as uh, the release for GCC for RISC-5. And so there's an example to follow if you want to add your own custom instructions. Thank Rick. No yep. Oh, he's wearing the uniform now. Okay. Well, I was, but I, I had kind of adopted you in the whole group. No, I, uh, is it on? Yeah. Yep. So I was just wondering about uh, the core itself. I seem to remember there's a Risk Five Swerve from Western Digital, and there's an Alibaba. Risk five, and there seem to be a whole uh, plethora of uh, of options here. So, how, how does it compare to what's available in the universe? Um, well, difficult questions. There are a lot of a lot of options, right? So, what we are we are offering is the quality of the IP. This is our our trademark compared to uh, other vendors or other providers. Basically, what we want to offer is uh, something which is high quality. Um, we have the verification uh, system, which uh, which guarantees that the, the quality of the IP is there. In terms of features, our PPA, for example, uh, parameters, uh, this strongly depends also on where you implement your system. So this is just the CPU. It is not a, a final product. So whether you, you then tape out your, um, your system on a certain technology or another or an FPGA, then you get different results. Right, so that's, that's a good answer. It's part of the answer, but it's a complicated question. Many, many, many layers. So Alibaba is a member of the Open Hardware Group. In fact, the Xiaoning Kui, an executive VP there, is our chairman of the, of the board. Um, and the Western Digital team has been involved in RISC-V from the beginning. Um, and and you know, the work that they do is good, very good. The processors, both of those processors from Alibaba and the Swerve family from uh, Western Digital are, are completely different animals in terms of the size of the processor, the, the, the uh, number of... Uh, stages in the pipeline. So they're just different, right? Uh, not necessarily better or worse. But the other aspect is we're learning as an ecosystem really how to develop open source hardware. One of the things that we know is open source projects are not successful when they are developed internally, finished, if you will, quote unquote, and then thrown over the wall. Hey, I've got something that's open source. They really need to exist in the public domain, developed in the public domain, multiple users. The verification environment is available. You can take it, replicate the whole platform, and then do whatever you want with it. And that's what we've tried to do within the open hardware ecosystem. Um, the work within Western Digital and Alibaba is good work, but it's more of the former model. We finished it. We've thrown it over the wall. I hope you like it. Is there a roadmap? Is there a commitment to extend them? Can you get their verification environment? All of those are no. And not that it's bad, it's just a different view of, you know, where I think the, like we talked about this morning, the hardware ecosystem overall is trying to figure out how to do open source properly. We think we got a pretty good handle on it so far. And documentation. And documentation. You can have any of those cores with zero documentation. We don't have, you know, the gold medal in documentation in the ecosystem, but at least there's an acknowledgement that it's needed and it's being worked on and there's some available. Any more questions for this nice fellow, Max? Or for him. <laughs> no. Oh. Uh -huh. So you mentioned the test kit that you can sign up on the website for the test kit uh, for the development kit. Sorry. Right. Um, what is 
that then is this like a real hardware yes which you uh, which you release by yourself and not like one of the other vendors or how does that work this is a project which comes from the open hardware group so all the members collaborated for the the development of this uh, of this project um, we have the tape out which is done by ourselves the design of the board which is done by well ourselves in terms of members of the community uh, we've been working together with uh, global foundries for the for the production of the silicon uh, i don't remember who is building the board and um, group gets okay so they are also <laughs> <laughs> it's also the platform where you can get the board from okay perfect thank you welcome so, yeah, the, the, sit here yeah, no 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 this is good i like it back here the early prototypes are from the first the first units are from group gets uh, and uh, digikey is also a global partner for open hardware group and eventually the boards will be moved through digikey internationally and just you know go to the digikey site order with your credit card and away you go any more questions Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much.